Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a look into the mafia the Jimmy Hoffa disappearance. Consider the compelling circumstances surrounding the disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa and the possible involvement of Sammy Gravano. Hoffa, who found himself at odds with influential figures within the Teamsters Union in New Jersey, vanished under mysterious circumstances. It is worth noting that Gravano held significant influence within the Teamsters, particularly as the overseer of Local 282, the largest construction trucking local in the metropolitan area. Furthermore, Gravano has publicly acknowledged his involvement in numerous organized crime-related homicides. The convergence of these factors presents a strong case from a circumstantial standpoint, highlighting both motive and opportunity. At the time of Hoffa's disappearance in 1975, Gravano had already committed his initial murder and was actively seeking to ascend the ranks of the Mafia by carrying out favors for higher-ranking mob bosses. Considering Gravano's admission to participating in 19 murders, it becomes increasingly compelling to associate him with Hoffa's fate. These circumstances, in combination, provide substantial grounds for speculation regarding Gravano's potential involvement in the disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa. Doubts have arisen among numerous experienced law enforcement officials regarding the murder charges recently filed against Sammy Bull Gravano by New Jersey authorities. These charges pertain to the alleged involvement of Richard, the Iceman, Cook Linsky and in the killing of Peter Calibro, a detective from the New York Police Department, on March 14, 1980. According to Bergen County Prosecutor John Molinelli, the investigation has led to the conclusion that Sammy Bull Gravano orchestrated the murder of Peter Calibro. Gravano allegedly hired Richard, Iceman, Kuklinski, a self-professed serial killer serving a life sentence, to carry out the killing. Calibro, a 36-year-old detective from the New York Police Department, was fatally shot while driving home to his wife and young daughter in Upper Saddle River, New Jersey, following his duty in the Queens Auto Crimes Division. Bergen County Prosecutor John Molinelli, along with Chief of Detectives Mike Mortiga, assert that Sammy Bull Gravano played a significant role in the murder of Peter Calibro. They claim that Gravano provided the murder weapon and actively participated in the crime. Allegedly, Gravano and Richard, Iceman, Kuklinski, communicating via walkie-talkie, awaited Calibro's arrival in his Honda Civic before carrying out the shooting. The basis for these charges stems from the testimony of Kuklinski, a 67-year-old who recently pleaded guilty to Calibro's murder. During the proceeding, Kuklinski appeared light-hearted and made jokes, seemingly enjoying himself, while Calibro's widow Stephanie and daughter listened in silence. Kuklinski openly admitted to shooting Calibro with a shotgun. However, the agreed-upon 30-year sentence holds little consequence for Kuklinski, as he is already serving four life terms, rendering him ineligible for parole until he reaches approximately 110 years of age. While New Jersey officials accept Kuklinski's account, others remain skeptical, believing that he may be fabricating the story. One investigator, who was part of a state and federal task force that successfully prosecuted members of a stolen car ring that allegedly paid Calibro up to $3,000 per week for insider information, expressed certainty that Gravano had no involvement and expressed doubt regarding Kuklinski's claims. Similar sentiments were shared by another law enforcement official who had discussions with the staff of then-prosecutor William Schmidt, citing evidence contradicting several of Kuklinski's assertions previously featured in an HBO special in May 2001. Among the claims debunked were Kuklinski's assertions of being associated with a murderous mob crew involved in car theft and drug dealing, led by Gambino soldier Roy DeMeo, responsible for at least 75 victims between the mid-1970s and early 1980s. Additionally, Kuklinski's claim of killing DeMeo in 1983 was refuted by authorities who successfully prosecuted most of the surviving crew members in the late 1980s. It was revealed that Kuklinski had only visited DeMeo's headquarters in Canarsie, Brooklyn once, to purchase a handgun, according to these officials. Law enforcement sources have come forward to confirm a different account, pointing to Carmela's two brothers as the primary suspects in the case. These sources argue that even if their suspicions turn out to be incorrect, it is highly improbable that Gravano, a Gambino soldier residing in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, would have been involved in a mob-driven plot to assassinate a corrupt police officer who had fallen out of favor with Roy DeMeo's crew based in Canarsie. Furthermore, the sources assert that if Gravano had indeed been part of the conspiracy, it would be equally unlikely for him to hire someone else to carry out the task. They argue that if Gravano were truly involved in the murder, he would have seized the opportunity to clear his record by admitting to the 19 other murders he has confessed to, including the killing of his brother-in-law. In that case, he would have implicated Kuklinski in the murder as well. 
Investigators dismiss the theory that Gravano refrained from involvement in the Calibro killing out of fear that it would jeopardize his chances of receiving a shorter prison sentence, as suggested by New Jersey detectives. They maintain that Gravano's alleged association with a cop killing would not have hindered his willingness to take responsibility for his other crimes. In essence, they imply that the accusation against Gravano for Calibro's murder lacks credibility, similar to the accusation regarding Hoffa's murder. However, it remains uncertain. When questioned about Hoffa's disappearance, Kuklinski, who claims to have committed numerous murders, including that of DeMeo and over 100 others since the age of 14, smiled and cryptically remarked, Now that's an interesting story. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more character breakdowns and analysis of your favorite gangsters. See you in the next one.